Computers are delicate and potentially dangerous pieces of electrical equipment. Do not try to open them without adult supervision. Welcome back to my computer lab, where I'm taking you through how computers work, bit by bit. Get it? Bits? <laughs> You'll get it later. <laughs> Today, I'm looking at the brains and real workhorses of any computer, their processors. Behold! You might need to get closer. Closer. Closer! Two common types of processors used in today's devices, central and graphics processing units. They may look small, but don't let their size deceive you. They're a true marvel of modern technology, squeezing an immense amount of computing out of millions or even billions of microscopic transistors. These transistors can switch on or off to represent either a 1 or a 0. They can then use all those 1s and zeros, also known as bits or binary digits, to calculate data and run programs in the language of computers. Binary. Everything you see on a computer is just the result of billions of 1s and zeros being calculated. In 1965, the CEO of Intel, Gordon Moore, observed that manufacturers and engineers were managing to double the amount of transistors they could put on processors every two years. This observation came to be known as Moore's Law. It's this process which has allowed computers to become so much more powerful, and why ever smaller computing devices, like smartphones and watches, are possible now when they would have been unfeasible just 20 years ago. However, transistors are rapidly approaching the point where they simply cannot get any smaller, causing Moore himself to go so far as to say he sees his law dying by around 2025. From that point on, major advances in computing power will likely have to come from other areas, such as artificial intelligence uh, or uh, uh, quantum computing. Uh, but I don't want to talk about those quantum computers. So, while processors may be the brains of a computer, they're not like squishy human brains full of emotions and whatnot. Blah. They run on 100% pure, clean maths. The speed they can do that maths is referred to as their clock speed. You see, processors need data to stay precisely synchronized or else numbers would go flying around willy-nilly. You get nothing but gibberish. So they use an electronic pulse called a clock signal to keep everything in lockstep. Each pulse sends a new set of instructions and calculations to process. So the faster its clock speed, the faster it can calculate. This is what people are referring to when they say a processor runs at a certain number of mega or gigahertz. One gigahertz is one billion clock signals per second. That's a lot of maths. However, since around 2004, it became less power efficient to increase performance through simply turning up clock speeds. Instead, they began using multiple cores and threads. Each core is essentially a whole extra processor placed on the same chip, whilst threads allow those cores to process two things at once. While many programs rely on CPU power, my favourite type of programs often need an extra bit of help from a special processor called a graphics processing unit. I'm talking about games, baby! So, you may be wondering what makes a GPU special? Why don't we just use more CPUs? Well, when it comes to rendering video game worlds, those few cores would draw each frame like so, because CPUs typically only have a few very fast cores, which are great at solving complex problems, but not so good at rendering graphics. While GPUs would draw the same frame like so, because they have hundreds or even thousands of slower cores with many threads each, perfect for pushing out frame after frame of those precious gaming pixels. As a gamer, you may be thinking, boo, CPU, and yay, GPU, but CPUs are still incredibly important for gaming. While GPUs take care of pumping out graphics, it's the CPUs that handle many of the really interesting things, such as artificial intelligence, physics, and actually telling the graphics card what graphics it needs to put out. But that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully you now have an appreciation for all those billions of bits your computers compute for you. <laughs> See you next time for a look at memory. Ah!